Hey, welcome, Antonis, to our 48V pre-con session. And we have uh, Mary here, and uh, you have, this is a colleague of yours that's with us here in Zoom. Antonis Mahatas? Ma I don't know. Uh, it's 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 her uh, transcription bot. <laughs> Not okay, her all bot. right. Very good. <laughs> it's, just, it's, a, it's an app that is connected directly to somebody's calendar. So if you put an event there, it just automatically gets invited. It comes up automatically. Well, we're glad that you're here. And those of you who are watching on our YouTube live stream, welcome. Uh, this is a section of our Gamecon 48V that we decided to add this year because there are so many talented creative individuals like Antonis that I have met from previous events and Antonis and I have been on panels together. And as we look at the 48 hours that we have to schedule speakers in the actual conference, we just simply ran out of time. And so I was like, well, we got to do something else. And my team looks at me like, really, we're going to do something else on top of 48 hours straight. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, we can do this. So I came up with the idea of these pre-conference, just micro sessions, 15 to 30 minutes max, where I get to talk to some of my friends and colleagues from across the globe about gamification, the work that they're currently doing, how they um, are still using gamification or game-based learning in some capacity within their designs. And so that's what we're doing today. So Antonis is uh, based in Germany. Antonis, tell me your last name. Say it for us. I, I told my you I would try it. Go ahead. <laughs> My my surname has just been uh, which has been a, quite a challenge for everyone involved with me uh, that doesn't speak Greek is triantafilakis. <laughs> yeah, there's 42 vowels in his last yep. name. If yeah, you have yeah. Yep. <laughs> so he is Greek, but he's based in Germany now, working. And yep. I want to talk briefly with Antonis just about the current work that he's doing because it's so exciting and impressive. And then I yep. want to go into the conversation on gamification. So talk with me about your current work, Antonis. Yeah, so uh, as usual, I'm wearing many hats and I'm working with uh, different organizations around the world. But uh, one of the organizations I'm spending a lot of time working with is called All for Climate. And uh, it operates as a legal and fiscal host for climate activists around the world. So what it does, it essentially takes away the bureaucracy from climate activists so they can focus on their activism instead of spending their time in bureaucracy. Uh, and that means the way it does it is uh, we give basically uh, a legal and uh, a legal and fiscal entity for them to be managing donations and expenses in full transparency and uh, fully legally without them having to do the work. And uh, yeah, we're helping more than 200 uh, collectives around the world right now. So that's uh, that's quite quite a quite an achievement, I would say. And uh, yes. the last thing I want to mention is, because this is related to the topic of today, I, I want to talk more about uh, intrinsic motivation. And um, yeah, in terms of intrinsic motivation, we realized last year that uh, we're actually helping people, uh, academic activists around the world, to deal with their financing issues. And we haven't been doing that much for ourselves. <laughs> so we decided to pursue uh, funding to actually make it happen. And we'll manage it. And uh, yeah, this is the first year in my life where I can say I will be getting paid for doing activism as far as oh, epic. That's calling, really good. Goes, and that's, you know, impressive. in our, uh, <laughs> we say like the cobbler's children, like it's the story of the cobbler made shoes for everybody else, but yeah. that's the children don't have shoes to wear, right? And that's yeah, yeah. That pretty much the story thing. of my life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're so busy, you know, yeah. doing everything that we don't do it ourselves. So that's really exciting. Uh, how, how, why climate activism? How did you get involved with that? And then we'll go on to gamification. I'm just curious. Right. Uh, well, I realized since I was a teenager, and that was a while ago, uh, how important the environment that we are living in is and how we can't really function outside of the system we are based in. So I've been a climate activist since I was a teenager in, in many different ways. And the more I grew up and the more I matured in my mentality, let's say, I tried more to, to, to tackle it from a meta level, from a systemic level. And that's what led me to this organization now. Very good. That's really exciting. I love it. Okay, so Antonis and I met, gosh, I don't even know, a couple of years back, <laughs> more than we wished to share. Uh, yeah. And we were on a panel discussing gamification and and we had known each other, just like I know many of my colleagues through social media and interactions that way. We still have not had the chance to meet live 
I think that yeah, I was going uh, yeah. to, yeah, I was going to come over and then uh, things happened, of course, but uh Antonis has a, a great background in mo- motivational design. So when we think about gamification, it really is that motivational design. What causes people to make the choices that they make? How can we influence those choices to have a valuable overlap? So what we find valuable, like as a corporation, what we need our employees to do and what they would find valuable, and we need those to overlap. And so, of course, that plugs a lot into that intrinsic motivation. So um, Antonis, share with us a little bit about the your work you've done in gamification, the research. I know you've got some things that you that to share. So I'd love to see it, see what you've got going on there. Yeah, that's true. So uh, I've been a trainer, facilitator, learning designer, whatever fancy name you want to attach to it. Essentially, I uh, develop courses and provide workshops for more than a decade now. And that's also how I got into gamification by uh, trying to see how I can make my courses and my workshops and my everything more engaging to the people. That's how I discovered gamification. Uh, and then through that, I discovered game design as well, which is taking more of my time than gamification lately. Uh, but yeah, my journey has been around gamification has been essentially using it to make my processes more engaging for people involved. And most of my experience has been in international youth work uh, and less so in in the corporate sector, which I've been involved more recently and as a way to to basically finance my volunteering for youth uh, youth work. So yeah, I've been among the I can I can safely say I've been among the pioneers in international youth work that has been explicitly using gamification to make learning more engaging. Because uh, it's it's worth to say that in international youth work, gamification is kind of uh, inherently ingrained into how we do training. It's just that it's not always uh, a conscious choice. It's just how we learn to do things because intrinsic motivation is pretty much at the, at the basis of how youth work works, which is not the same uh, in, in the corporate world as I discovered in practice. Right, very good. And when we think about Gamification design for learning, of course, that it can go a, a lot of different directions. Like at Sententia, we really focus on corporate or HR compliance. Uh, but then, of course, there is, you know, uh, teachers who in their classrooms from kindergarten on yeah. up are using it effectively. Uh, when we think about engaging youth um, to not overtly say, hey, we're going to play a game or we're going to use gamification here. It's just part of what uh, their everyday life looks like. They get lots of choices to engage or not engage every day of their life. And so that's really fascinating. I love that idea. So I had I had asked everyone who I was doing these interviews with to answer a question, like if you were talking to an educator or a chief learning officer or uh, a teacher or an organization lead that was thinking of bringing in some form of gamification to engage, what would be one thing you would want them to know about gamification? So as you think about your specific niche that you focus on, what do you think is one thing that people who are interested in using this should know about gamification? Yeah, so the main and almost the basis of everything around gamification, the main thing is motivation. And in that regard, the first thing I invite everybody to understand is the difference between intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation. Uh, I do have some examples to bring. So if you can uh, put my I told Antonis he's shaming me. Look at his beautiful background. I need <laughs> you to send that to me so I can start using it, Antonis, after we're done with the call. And then he's got yeah. this fantastic uh, presentation <laughs> that's just delightful. I didn't even get to see all that. I just saw one quick view. So uh, let's let's do it. Talking about background, right? It's not yes. just the, the, my background in gamification. It's also my virtual background. And all Very that. good. Right. So uh, let, let's get into what I want to show you today because it's uh, it Thank proves you. my point better than I could <laughs> in just words. Right. So I want to talk a bit about why intrinsic motivation matters and 
explain how how <laughs> I had a recent discovery of uh, how it can work based on other things. Uh, right, so I'm going to talk about three things in the next, uh, I don't know, five, seven minutes. One, uh, why AI and this recent surge of AI actually proves the need for intrinsic motivation. Uh, then I'm going to talk about uh, what interesting motivation is. And finally, just, just a hint on how to do it properly. So with a couple of friends that are, that are actually in the call now, recently we started a, um, a project that will probably become a startup on gamifying a blue-collar workspace. And uh, like everybody else, we also started experimenting with AI and asking ChatGPT about uh, names or about processes and about things. And recently, an app that I'm using, uh, it's called 7Taps, introduced uh, an AI uh, in order to create your mini course. In short, 7Taps is, is uh, it's, it's a good platform to create a short course or a presentation that takes only seven tabs to just get into the gist of what you're trying to say. So uh, the the project that we're working on is how to gamify a blue collar workspace. So yeah, I asked uh, seven tabs AI, and this is untouched. What I'm going to show you is what AI uh, answered in this uh, with this prompt: how to gamify a blue collar workspace. So uh, let's get into it. The first thing that it said is that we should introduce a reward system. And if you look at the description, it's horrific. <laughs> I know. It really, it really pains me to see right. this. Like, this oh, is the first this. thing that appears. Oh, no. <laughs> this, look at it. Look at it. A reward yes. system that incentivizes employees to work harder and more efficiently, like putting even more pressure that somehow makes it more engaging for employees, according to AI. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, yeah, introducing a system of points. That's what gamification is, right? Just points, dry points that are not connected to anything. Incredible. That's how to do gamification. Uh, then it says, create a leaderboard, continuing in the most horrific way possible. Set a leaderboard that essentially creates even more competition, internal competition, mind you, among the employees to outperform each other, is if you want to do gamification wrong, this is exactly how you should do it. Simply have people competing internally and just see how quickly they get stressed out and how quickly they want to leave. Uh, the, the, the next thing that it says, game like challenges. It starts to get there, but still, it's like even though it says promote collaboration and teamwork, it's this is not how you do it because it says they can compete to earn rewards right. and somehow this improves their collaboration. Competition improves collaboration. Wow. Amazing. AI, AI really understands. <laughs> then the next thing is uh, that it says is to introduce level ups. And again, it's like it's getting somewhere because it focuses a little bit more on, um, on how to become better at something, which if you use only against yourselves, can be motivating, but here it very clearly says that you should do it against another employee. So it's related to the leaderboard that it uh, introduced before. Then finally, it says host events. Finally, we're getting into something that people can engage on, uh, that, that everybody can engage on without necessarily having uh, to, to, to compete against one another. It's, uh, it says very clearly there that it should be fun and engaging for employees. It finally gets to somewhere, but it's only on the last slide of this. Uh, I, I want to make it clear here that I'm not dissing on Seven Taps. Seven Taps is amazing, and if anything, it actually uses AI properly because all it does it it uses the the, the engine. I think it uses ChatGPT like almost everybody else to create uh, presentations based on on outcomes from ChatGPT uh, or any other. I, th I think ChatGPT is a, it's the main uh, it's the most famous at least. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, what I want to say here is why you should be careful using AI, and that's because AI is not really, the I there is missing. It's not really intelligent. It doesn't understand things the way we do. All it does is, is optimizing statistics. It's, fed, it's, it's been fed with uh, many more, much more data that we can process as humans, and it simply creates patterns out of this and extracts those into something that, that seems comprehensible. It does a great job at that, but it, it can only be as limited as the data you feed it in. Uh, another example I wanted to share that I forgot to put in the presentation is that based on simply uh, relying on data that it, it feeds on, it can very easily become 
as <laughs> racist, uh, sexist, transphobic, or uh, as, as discriminative as the data it feeds on. Like we tried a couple of times uh, using Mid Journey as well to create um, logos or, or images for backgrounds and all that. Somehow, if I forget to put uh, to to make it gender specific, or or if I forget to put the, the color of skin there or something else, it somehow assumes that whenever I say human, it most definitely means a man. Like every time I said, uh, "Draw me a human that does this." it immediately comes up with only male figures. And I'm wondering why. And then I, I'm thinking, oh yeah, it depends on the data you fit in. So yeah, what I want to say is uh, be really careful with AI because it really depends completely on the data you fit it in. So this is an example of gamification. Uh, and I want to show why this is relevant for the topic I'm speaking today, which is intrinsic motivation. So I want to get back into just the basis of what is intrinsic motivation and why uh, I believe one of the first things that you should check out, like as one of the first theoretical models that you should check out if you want to understand motivation, is called self-determination theory. There have been many other models and many amazing gamification experts that are, have been basing the work on that and uh, deriving extra models from that. But this is kind of a basis uh, because it really helps you to understand intrinsic motivation best. So what intrinsic motivation, what self-determination theory says is that there are, according to research by Desi and Ryan from uh, 2007, if I'm not mistaken, there are three inherent needs that all humans share. And these are the following three, autonomy, which basically means that uh, the individual has control of the outcome of what they're doing. You can see that a lot in arts, you're, you're drawing, you're creating music, you're, uh, you're customizing your, your avatar on a social media application because you control the outcome of it. So you have autonomy and that intrinsically motivates you. Then the second one is competence uh, or mastery in, in other models. And that essentially means you're feeling that you are becoming better at specific skill. Then the final one is relatedness and that's related to our sense of belonging and community, which is uh, the, third, uh, the third element that is inherent to in an inherent, is an inherent need among all human beings, according to self-determination theory. So if you use these three, or if you tap until uh, up to, if you tap into these three core things, then people are doing something for the sake of doing it and not in order to get rewards, <laughs> which are uh, extrinsic motivation. Uh, I should have worked better on my presentation because this is constantly on my nose, but I guess that, that invites uh, the rest of you people this to way, see yeah. it more clearly. Yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, this goes further, the theory goes further uh, with what they call uh, uh, organismic, this organismic model. And this, this analyzes basically the difference between uh, the, 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 the going from extrinsic motivation and into intrinsic motivation. So on the right side of this, you can see that uh, Intrinsic motivation is fully, uh, fully implemented, fully adapted on. So people have the motivation to just keep doing what they're doing for the sake of doing it. Then on the right side, like on the very, on the left side, on the very left, none of this is tapped in. So people are not motivated at all. And the more you go from left to right, you see that more elements of that are being used, are being uh, explicitly tapped on into your process. Uh, without getting in detail into this, because it's a, it's a paper that I recommend everybody to just read and understand, the main element that I want people to take from this is that if you want to implement extrinsic rewards, they should be reinforcing intrinsic motivation for them to work in the long term. So that's that's the main element of this, uh, of the, of, the, of this adaptation of uh, self-determination theory. So, yeah, this is the basic of it. That's really Tap good. into this I know three I... inherent needs and you're done it. Yeah, very good. I know I've, I've played with the AI when I asked it questions and I saw what I gave back. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. But again, it goes back to that's the common story out there that's the story that people tell of what is gamification and it exactly yeah. gives you the, those answers i think about uh the self-determination theory and the whole idea of competence or mastery and like with the ai response on level ups 
That's exactly right, because it's tying into that progress yeah. principle, right? I need to make progress. But if you look up, if you look at what is meaningful to us or what we want to create among students or in the workplace, it's that personal, like that PR, my personal record, my personal best. I'm moving towards mastery, which doesn't mean that you have to lose, right? Because I'm yep. getting better doesn't mean that you have you it costs you something. Uh, and by creating that competition, we get outcomes that we absolutely do not want. And unfortunately, in a lot of our organizations, and again, I work mostly in corporate, but their actions reinforce those negative outcomes rather than yep. rewarding the behaviors, like rather than rewarding the sale, reward the behaviors that cause sales to happen and me helping the next person to also be able to exhibit those behaviors, do those actions. So it's really great. I love that you shared that, Antonis. It's so key because we have people at GameCon who come on an entire plane of just getting started. I'm brand new in this. I, I'm curious. I want to learn more to having fully deployed for hundreds of thousands of employees and everything in between. And there's no wrong place to be on that continuum. Every yeah. place is the right place is where you are right now. And then just um, learning and growing with people like Antonis, asking him questions. So, so delighted that you were here with us. That's so very great. I'm hoping that you'll be able to find some time in your schedule during the 48 hours that we're online to just come and hang out. We have the conference in what's called the Remo platform. And so we have it yep. laid out. Uh, it's a lodge where you can just come in and you can sit in the lounge, sit at a bar, sit at a table with somebody and have conversations uh, in between sessions. And uh, if you want to connect with Antonis, I'm sure he would be delight delighted to answer questions and connect with you. Antonis, Absolutely. I'm so very thrilled that you spent Saturday with me. This is so nice. It's so great to see your face and to connect again. I look yes, forward uh, to the to point this. we meet in, in real life, right? <laughs> I know. I look, I know it will happen. I know it will. And so uh, it's just really good. Thank you. I really appreciate the knowledge share because that's the other thing that you find in this gamification community is there's a real lack of, fortunately, a one-upmanship. Like Antonis yeah, yeah. doesn't have to prove to anybody that he has more experience and knows more than the next person. Everybody just shares what they know. And then we discuss it. And well, what about and how would that work? And what if we considered? And that's what the community looks like. And you, that was just a fantastic example of that this morning, Antonis. So thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. uh, you. If I can have like 30 seconds to show. You can have as much do... time as you like. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, you got All six right. more minutes max to make this a micro session. All right, go ahead. Yeah, Absolutely. so I have a little yeah. bit of time. So uh, the, the last thing I want to mention is how to do it properly. <laughs> and uh, the way to do it properly for me Good, is thanks. step one. How do you start uh, without PBL? Like there's a reason experiencing motivation uh, only things like points, badges, and leaderboards have gained their own uh, their own abbreviation among gamification experts as like the, the curse to avoid. <laughs> so the first thing I want people to do is, can you actually gamify your process without using PBL at all? How? Step two, start with intrinsic motivation. Think of this, uh, these three elements, autonomy, competency, relatedness. Uh, relatedness. It's, uh, try to come up with a process that enhances these three elements. And uh, then and only then add PBL and only if it makes sense as a as a loop, as a game loop that reinforces intrinsic motivation. So yeah, step one, can you do it without points by the leaderboards? Third, uh, step two, intrinsic motivation and how do you tap upon the three uh, basic human needs? And then and only then introduce extrinsic uh, motivation elements like points, badges, leaderboards, uh, coins, whatever loot, <laughs> whatever extrinsic uh, motivation elements you want, only as a game loop that reinforces the intrinsic motivation. That's, that's the whole purpose of extrinsic motivation rewards like that is to enhance what you're already doing at the core of your process, which is intrinsic motivation. That's really good. And the reason everyone starts with PBL is because you it's 
measurable, right? Like, so we need something that we can put a number to. So those are all achievement related. And that's such a, a, a great tip because rather than starting there, go back to that. Really, what is it that we're wanting to motivate? And then creating that game loop of if it makes sense and how can we not make it about the points or about the leaderboard, but it's about this behavior over here that uh, is really plugging into who they are as individuals, which is what we talk about engagement, engagement, engagement. And, you know, when I think about employee engagement, the secret is not three-story slides, foosball tables, chefs that come in, unlimited vacation. Those are all night, a beer at three o'clock. You know, those are perks. (laughs) Those are not motivators. Those are things that are nice to that, that come as a perk. What really gets employees engaged is me helping you to be successful. And yeah. I do that by helping you to have relatedness, competency, and autonomy, right? So what, how can we continue to build that into your work? So you know that you're, you're doing important work that ha- that is meaningful. So those, that's just so good, Antonis. I love it. Yeah. See, we could talk all day. That's the problem yes. also with yes. the same <laughs> Once you get us going, man, we are we are oh. ramped up and ready to go all day. That's really, yeah. really good. I love it. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Antonis, for being here again. And we'll, we'll see you on February 26th through 28th. If you have not yet registered, uh, you can go to gamecon.us. Antonis, you have a discount code, don't you? I do, yes. You know it off it's... the top of your head? Uh, Antonius 48V, I believe. <laughs> yeah, so Antonius, so his first name, I say Antonius, but there's an O in there, right? So it's, and uh, he it's, it's a, it's it a like Greek that. thing. It's a Greek thing. It's 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 really it's really weird, <laughs> but yeah, both are correct. Antonius and Antonius are both correct. Antonius yes. is a legal name. Antonius is like the informal way to call somebody. It's just a Greek thing. Yeah. So and Antonius, your your code works in the EU, and I want to put it in chat. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it it works uh, for, for USA and Germany, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Okay, and yeah, that gives right. you twenty five percent discount. Yes. yes oh, correct. there you go. You got it. Thank you. You were faster than me. All right. Uh, yeah. So you go ahead and use if you're in the EU or the US, you can use this and get twenty five percent discount, which is better than my discount. So that's good. <laughs> I like it. That's very good. All right. And Gamacon.us, we're going 48 hours straight. You can check out the lineup at Gamacon.us. This recording will be available if you've registered for the conference. You can access it for a full nine months and go back. And and when I say steal that information, he's giving it freely. But go back and look at it again and say, yes, I need to take this and bring this into what I'm doing. I look forward to hearing more about your great successes as you move forward with this, Antonis. It's very, it's meaningful and impactful work. So thank you for working on it. Appreciate you. Thank you for we'll the insight. It was really nice to see you and see you at Gamecon. <laughs> yes, thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye, Bye. everyone. Bye.